Welcome to the Posture Strength and Mobility Podcast. I'm Isaac Osborne, and I'm here to share with you tips, tricks, hacks, interesting musings, and much more in short, digestible episodes. To learn more about how you can improve your posture, strength, and mobility, check out the show notes for links. Onward with the show. Episode 7, Your Second Heart. In this episode, we're going to talk about how two lower leg muscles are essentially been nicknamed your second heart and how you might not be taking the best care of it. We're also going to go over the best exercises for taking care of your second heart. I have exciting news that I want to share with you before we get started with the show. Every month, I'm going to be giving away a mini integrator massage gun. Check out the show notes for a link to enter to win a mini integrator massage gun. All right, back to the show. Okay, let's jump right into it. Here's some fun facts that are I find really interesting, and hopefully you find them interesting as well. The body has roughly 60,000 miles of blood vessels. The heart beats approximately 100,000 times a day, pushing 2,250 gallons of blood. The average person takes approximately 9,000 steps a day. The venous system holds 70% of our blood at any given time. If you're not familiar with the venous system, the veins transport deoxygenated blood back to the heart to become oxygenated. This description I'm about to read is not mine. It's from Healthline. The link to the article is in the show notes. The calf muscle is often considered the second heart because it plays a role within the circulatory system that is similar to the heart. One pump of the heart exerts enough power to send blood throughout the body, reaching the lower extremities in just seconds. That oxygen-rich blood flows through arteries and capillaries to reach every cell of the body, providing oxygen and nutrients. The oxygen-depleted blood then needs to travel back up through veins to reach the heart, where it will pass into the lungs to receive a replenishing supply of oxygen. The problem is that traveling back up to the heart takes more force than a single pump of the heart can provide because the blood is flowing counter to gravity. To get the job done efficiently, the veins need negative energy from the pumping heart plus stimulation from what is now known as the calf muscle pump. How does this phenomenon work in the body? You have two very important muscles in the lower leg, the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscle. These are your two largest calf muscles when blood reaches that lower limb, blood tends to pool in the veins and in the lower leg because of gravity, like I just mentioned from that article. When that blood pools, the heart obviously has a harder time because especially if you're standing, as even if you're sitting, has a hard time pumping back to the heart with just the heartbeat of, of pushing that blood flow back. So it needs some assistance to do that. So these two muscles provide the assistance. When these two muscles contract, they squeeze that blood, just like if you had a bottle of water with one of those caps that you can squirt water out of, push those two muscles together, and that blood's going to get basically squirted in the venous system back to the heart because it's providing pressure into the the venous system that is pushing that that blood back into the heart. The main exercise that would trigger this would be walking. Walking is something that our ancestors did all the time, much more than we do now, especially depending on where you live, what kind of work that you do. The dangers of less blood returning to the heart and if your muscles start to atrophy because of less activity, you're going to get varicose veins because that pooling starts breaking down the valves in the veins and then You don't have as many valves, and so that's where you get that swelling in those varicose veins. And it can also lead to venous insufficiency. And if not treated properly, this can lead to pain, swelling, muscle cramps, skin color changes, and leg ulcers. Obviously, this is not something that you want to happen to you. What can you do about it? As I mentioned earlier, walking is the best exercise that we can do. If I had to choose one exercise out of all exercises in the world and only do that exercise for the rest of my life, it would be walking. I would choose walking over anything because it is what, in my opinion, human beings were meant to do. We're meant to be walking. We're the most efficient walking animals on the planet. We can walk 
massive distances and our body is set up to walk very efficiently. So walking is your remedy for this type of thing of getting that of getting that venous flow of blood back to your heart and improving your circulatory system. Besides walking, the other two exercises that I would suggest for you to do are one, bringing the legs up the wall and pumping your calves, and two, heel raises. So I'll demonstrate the first one. You're gonna lie on the floor. All you need is a wall. Bring your your legs up the wall. You don't even have to get your butt to the wall. You can you can be about four or five inches to the wall, but if you can get your butt all the way to, to the wall, even better. I have a couple options while I'm here. I can just lay here and relax, and or I can pump my calves by taking the top of my foot and bending at the ankle and bring it towards my knee. So I'm bringing the top of my foot towards the knee as I'm bending the ankle back and forth. So I'm doing this motion, I can go slower, and this will pump the calves and it'll pump blood flow out, especially since your legs are elevated. Gravity is going to exert its force on the venous flow and drain your legs and drain interstitial fluid and drain the blood flow, lymph, everything from your legs. So it's a great thing to do. Regardless, every single day, put your legs up the wall five to 15 minutes. Heel raise is very simple exercise. You can put your hand on a chair, you can put your hand on a wall, you can put two hands on the wall, face the wall, just so it allows you to balance. And then raise your heels up so that you're on the balls of your feet. Just when you do it, just before you do it, just make sure that your feet are straight. So look down at your feet, make sure they're pointing straight ahead, not out to the side. And then raise and lower your heels. So I'm raising my heels up and then I'm dropping them down. And while you're doing this, keep your, keep your thighs locked. Try to go as vertical as you, as you can. Some people, when they try to do heel raises, they end up going forward as they do so. But it's much better just to go vertical. You'll get more calf activation if you go vertical. Try to bring those heels as high as you can. Get a full range of motion out of them. You don't have to do a lot of reps. Do 10 to 20 reps. Do it multiple times throughout the day so that you're getting that blood flow moving through your body. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you liked it, please subscribe and leave a positive review so others may find it and get help too. Check out the show notes for links on how to win a mini integrator massage gun, posture strength and mobility classes that focus on corrective exercises, or self myofascial release protocols for neck pain, back pain, knee pain, plantar fasciitis, and much more with my massage gun, The Integrator. Until next time, keep exploring your body and stay curious. Thank you.